Is anyone else watching that 90s show? Well, there's around 13,000 followers on the show's subreddit, and the show's second season just released on Netflix, so I guess it's safe to say that at least some people are watching it. But let's just hope it doesn't get axed by the streamer after the third season. Rest in peace one day at a time. And though it's doing relatively well, I just can't help but wonder how much bigger it would be if it was on cable, or followed the old TV model of releasing episodes once a week over a few years, rather than 10 to 16 20 minute episodes every year. And there was actually a one and a half year gap between seasons one and two, and season two was split into two eight episode parts. Like who thought we could or should watch TV like this? If that 90s show was produced as if it was a TV sitcom from the 90s, the show would be getting 23 episode seasons airing at 8pm on Fox, have filler episodes, holiday specials, musical episodes, and generally there would be more time to get to know the cast of characters and the environment they're in. Kind of like the original That 70s Show, which premiered in 1998 and had 200 episodes over 8 seasons and a few years. Like when was the last time we had a family sitcom like that? Maybe Modern Family? Young Sheldon? Heck, even the cast of Young Sheldon got more exposure than these kids because guess what? It was on cable and released new episodes every week, totaling 141 episodes. And the kids of Young Sheldon even took home some Kids' Choice Awards, are in the popular zeitgeist, and are getting a spin-off TV show. Like, that only happens in the world of regular TV, where you can build up a fan base over time and connect with audiences. I think the problem with streaming is just perfectly encapsulated with that 90s show because the reason the original was so successful was because you got to see the characters grow up every week and have room to tell a story, not two parts of eight freaking episodes after a one and a half year hiatus. Not only is the streaming model a disservice to storytelling, but also to the young actors involved in the project, all of whom are in their late teens and early 20s with almost no large followings on social media. Ashley Ofterhide, who plays Gwen, is only 18 years old, and most of the other cast is just turning 20. But they're not getting the same level of hype as their predecessors on that 70s show because it's not on cable it's not reaching people the same way. And you can't just coast along on the nostalgia of a once famous property to get views, and young Sheldon knew this, which is why so many changes were made from the original Sheldon lore. But that doesn't stop that 90s show from including a lot of older stars, and I'm not just talking about Red and Kitty and other callbacks from the original series like Laura Prepon and Johnny Chong, but also the people from Clerks. Season 2 also saw the addition of an already well-known young actor, Kira Kosserin, from Disney Shake It Up and Nickelodeon the Thundermans, who plays Kelso's daughter. These additions were presumably made to try to grab both older and younger viewers, as if the great cast of the original characters couldn't hold water on their own. But here's the thing. They can. Young Sheldon didn't bring back any of the old cast members for cameos, at most they did voice work because they knew that the original characters would be able to stand on their own with time. But that 90s show feels the need to pull out all the stops, and to me it just shows that they're desperate and afraid, when again, they don't need to be. The new characters and the actors who portray them are a great breath of fresh air to the established world. They're not only funny, but talking about serious issues and taboo subjects like female masturbation and sex. And and this show could have been huge for their careers if it was on the old network model like it was for the cast of that 70s show and even young Sheldon. The cast of that 70s show owe their success to this series because it got their names out there. And over eight seasons, they were able to accrue industry knowledge and show their range to audiences across the nation. But how are people supposed to find out about that 90s show? Sure, it's on Netflix and Netflix is a huge streaming platform, but it's not the same as cable. It's not the same as a show like Young Sheldon where families and kids would gather to watch every week at 8pm and that takes place over the course of an entire year. You can watch all of season 2 of that 90s show in one day and then never think about it again. <laughs> and it just sucks because now that the show and world is more diverse, the actors aren't getting the same career boost as their mainly white thin predecessors did almost 30 years ago. People of color and fat actors already get boxed in and put down in the industry. It would have been great to have a mainstream show for them to reach more people instead of just a mere 16 episode season buried in a streaming service that's already oversaturated with content. Imagine if this show was on Fox like the original That 70s Show or CBS like Young Sheldon was once a week over the course of 
almost seven years. Imagine how many more people would know about it, make memories around watching it, and how it would break up the monotony of white families on TV. I guess the benefit of it being on a streaming service is that they can tackle more taboo subjects that wouldn't be suitable or Fox approved. But I don't know, The Big Bang Theory had some really awfully offensive jokes and it got aired. I often wonder who that 90s show is for because it is aimed at tweens like middle and high schoolers, which is awesome, but it also wants to pander to older audiences who remember clerks and who are probably in their 40s now with preteen kids. So in a way, it's nostalgic for adults, but generally I'd say it's geared to tweens to watch with other young people away from their parents, which is a good thing. We need tween programming that's able to tackle mature subjects that middle and high schoolers can relate to, like self-discovery and masturbation and having sex, that's just for them. That's not to say parents can't be involved in a healthy way with that kind of stuff, but kids should also have safe spaces away from their parents to discover who they are, and art can help them with that. There are some series and movies kids, especially middle and high school age kids, should watch and contemplate away from adults. Kids of all ages should have art that's just for them. Not everything needs to be family focused or adult focused. Some stuff can be solely for kids or solely for tweens and teens. Tween centered series like that 90s show should take young people seriously and respect them and again be just for them. And I think that 90s show is even better than Young Sheldon in that respect because it doesn't focus on adults and family or even like praying and religion but rather friendships which is core to being a kid. And again the diversity in the show is its strength. I think I mainly ask who is this for when it comes to streaming shows like that 90s show because streaming services really don't have any core identity. And that sucks for middle and high schoolers trying to find good quality content. Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, what's the difference? Back in the day there were kid channels, tween channels, and adult channels and you'd go out of different channels as you'd age and would find different series and movies. And even within channels there were different programming blocks. Like Disney Junior for preschoolers that aired absurdly early in the morning, then around 3 p.m. when school got out there'd be cartoon programming for 6 to 12 year olds like Impossible and Recess, and then at night around 7 p.m. there'd be live action kid sitcoms like Hannah Montana and That's a Raven, and to end the night there'd be a Disney Channel original TV movie. On Nick there'd be Nick at Night, which would show a sitcom aimed at older kids and adults like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, George Lopez, and even Malcolm in the Middle. And when you grew out of those kid channels, you'd watch MTV or ABC Family to catch up on Gilmore Girls, Pretty Little Liars, The Fosters, and even Greek. Does anyone remember Greek? ABC Family, later known as Freeform, had so much tween programming that wasn't for the whole family nor adults, and I miss that. There was also, of course, The CW with Supernatural and Vampire Diaries and other channels like History, Animal Planet, Discovery, TLC, etc., and each channel had their own brand for better or worse. But on Netflix, I can find everything from Love Island and reality TV to harrowing dramedies like Baby Reindeer to the tween sitcom That 90s Show. Though the abundance of entertainment in one place is good in theory, in reality it makes little to no sense and having so much to watch ironically makes it impossible to find anything to watch. HBO and Disney Plus have the same problem. Though on HBO I know I'm gonna find old Warner Brother movies and big budget dramas as HBO was a channel before a streaming service, it has now been turned into Mac which means nothing to me, like what is on Max? It's just an amalgamation of old sitcoms that used to be on cable like The Big Bang Theory and Friends, but also House of the Dragon and other original programming. On Disney Plus, there's Shogun, Deadpool mixed in with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. There used to be Star Plus where they'd have more adult shows apart from Disney Plus, but then they thought, fuck it, let's just merge everything together. That'll make it easier to find things. <laughs> Though you can edit your profile on all streaming services to have different age appropriate content. But I don't know, I just miss channels and TV sitcoms that would release throughout the year and be able to find their intended audience through channel branding. Can we bring that back? Is that just too much to ask? Can we also have physical media again with blooper reels and games and commentary tracks? I mainly feel bad for the young actors on that 90s show who could have gotten a bigger break if the show aired the traditional way. The actors from that 70s show again owe their lucrative careers to said series. And the same could have happened for these young people who are just starting out in the business and it would have been a huge leg up for the non-white and non-straight cast members. But because of streaming, they're not getting the same treatment. And that sucks. And I'm sure some reviewers will say that that 90s show isn't as good as the original because they're too woke now. But in reality, it's a decent tween show whose only fault is not being able to reach more viewers to gain 
proper series momentum. If it aired on like CBS or Nick at Night or even ABC Family, I feel like the show would have done wonders. So that's it for this one. And before I wrap up, I will say I hate how a lot of the old cast members of that 70s show that are on that 90s show wrote letters of support to convicted rapist Danny Madison or Masterson and didn't face any repercussions for protecting again a convicted rapist who's facing 30 years to life. That does taint the show, but that's not at all the fault of these young actors who are just trying to do what they love and start their careers. Anyway, Let's see what happens with that 90s show and I wish the series the best of luck and hope more tween-centered series with diverse cast get made. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in my next one and thanks for listening to my rant. Bye.